הקדוש ברוך הוא says דן נשמה if it honors the contract by using that body that I gave them that sophisticated technology that I gave them that sophisticated suit that I gave them with a digestive system and a vision and a hearing and a thinking and a conscience and so on if he uses it to honor and serve me it will not die it will go to heaven permanently but if it violates the contract to such a high degree without doing tshuva he will die but only after it's torn away from the peace that is God himself and that's what Gainom is for so now not everyone is at that extreme some people sin but do tshuva but not complete tshuva for anyone who took the advice that I gave some time ago about looking at the book of Rabbi Yudaftaya Allah wa Shalom in there you read many many interesting stories Rabbi Yudaftaya dealt with the mystical on a daily basis like we deal with the natural and he tells a story in the Sefil that one time an old man came to him and told him Rabbi I need you to help me I'm an old man and I made a very big sin in my life I had relations with my daughter-in-law and I need to do tikkun I need to do tshuva for it I'm sorry for it but I know there's certain tikkunim I need to do for it please help me and Rabbi Yudaftaya that was very versed in the mystical and the tikkunim and so on told him exactly what to do and he did a tikkun Shortly after, Rabbi Yudaftaya writes this in the Sefer. This old man came to him, in a, he died, and he came to him in a dream. And he says to him, Kvodarav, I appreciate what you've done for me, but I wanted to tell you that there was one part that was missing. The tikkun that we did was tikkun fashet ish, being with a married woman, which is one of the worst crimes you can make in a Torah. A person that dies without doing tikkun on Eshet Ish has no share of the world to come. Permanent genom. So we did a tikkun on that, Baruch Hashem. And that's why when I got up, when I died, at the Bet Din, they did not give me the Gzar Din of genom permanently. Because I kept Torah, I kept mitzvot, and I had this sin on my uh, thing, but I did a tikkun for it. But as soon as I arrived, they still had two malachim, two giant malachim, take my body, take my neshama, and perform an operation on my brit to remove all of the waste, all of the tumah that I had on my brit because I did not do a tikkun on being with the kala, my daughter-in-law. So that one act created a certain amount of tumah that they had to remove from me. And they had to perform an operation in Shamaim to remove it from me. And I've been suffering for it until now. And that's for one time, one sin. We're not talking about wasting seed for 20 years. We're not talking about cheating on your wife every other day. We're not talking about having girlfriend, boyfriend. We're not talking about all of the crimes. I'm talking about a religious person made a mistake. Big mistake. But at least did a tikkun before he died. Says the Rabbi Yudaftaya, the two malachim, the size of Shemaim, had an operation on my brit. Who wants one? Anyone want to volunteer? I think it's easier to just keep your breath by remembering the story. Now, sometimes it's the wonderful stories like this that wake up the neshama. Sometimes it's other stories. At times like this, we are using everything that we possibly can to wake people up. We have to.